So, previously we looked at a vector in component form, something like that, and we converted it to polar form, something like that. So, the question is, if you were given that and asked what that was, how would you do it? Alright, well, let's take a look. Here is a vector in polar form. Let's write it in component form. First step. Very, very simple. You'd draw a picture, wouldn't you? Of course you would. You're the sort of person who draws pictures. Okay. A length of 5 and an angle of 30 degrees with the x-axis. Okay. This is going to be really straightforward. It's just trigonometry. Right? So, looking at this, um, if I wanted to know this value here, let's call it A, and if I wanted to know this value here, I'm just thinking Sokotoa, right? Uh, let's take a look. So let's do let's do this A value first, right? Adjacent hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse. So um, cos cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, what's the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is five. What's the adjacent? I don't know. That's the thing I want to know. And the angle? 30 degrees. Okay, I can rearrange that to 5 cos 30 degrees. And that is going to be equal to the value of A. I'm going to stop there because it's very, very useful information and we're going to be able to sort of generate a very uh, nice, neat, awesome formula from it. Okay, what about B? Okay, well, that's just sine, right? Because sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, and then we know the angle, sine 30 degrees. We know the hypotenuse is 5, and that's going to be equal to opposite. We re rearrange that to be 5 sine 30 equals the opposite. I should stop using the opposite here. It looks like a zero, and I've used the letter B. Let's make it B. All right, so these two things are really super awesome, right? Now, A is how far across it is. It's the first component in our component form. So we know that V is going to be equal to whatever this value is here. And I'm going to resist typing it into my calculator. I'm just going to write it at 5 cos 30, right? This one here, this is how far up it is. This is our upwards component, 5 sine 30. Done. Fantastic. Now, of course, I can type it into my formula, into my calculator. I'll do it now. All right, 4.33, 2.5. Does that make sense? Well, it's not too steep of an angle. It's 5 long here, and so I'm saying it's 4.3 long here and 2.5 up. That feels right. Okay, I said, you know, this is important information. This is interesting information because now we can generalize this and generalizing this makes our life really, really, really great. Okay, because here's the general version of all of this stuff. Vector u is equal to, let's call it the magnitude of u, which is that, right? Well, well. And then just call it angle theta. All right, so this represents every single vector ever created. It has a magnitude of, you know, itself, its own magnitude, and it has an angle theta. We can convert that to component form using essentially this formula. We can say that vector u, therefore, will always be equal to the magnitude of itself cos, whatever angle it happens to make with the x-axis, sine, whatever angle it happens to make with the x-axis. And using that formula, right, this formula here, we can just convert things in, in, a, in a second. Straightforward. We don't have to draw a bunch of triangles. We should, though, because then we'll know whether we're getting it right or not. Uh, but if you were told something like, Okay, I've got a new vector for you. Uh, the vector is um, 7 
120 degrees, right? You can put the number seven here, right? So it's going to be seven cos 120. Put the angle in seven sine 120. Put the angle in. Boom, boom. Two answers, and we're finished. Done. As you can see, converting from polar form to component form, given this nice, neat little formula, is much, much easier than working the other way, I think. Uh, but it is important to understand that like, it works. This is the reason it works. It's just trigonometry. It's just we have a neat little way of, of making it happen really fast. Practice, practice.